starting off as we mean to go on with 2022 something a little bit different a treat for you all happy new year Hello, I'm Colin Green, and you are listening to Spike Pit. Hello folks, it's me again. Today we've got a special episode. I am delighted to be joined by the man putting the science into gaming. It's the geomologist, Carl Rodriguez. Hello, Carl. Hello, how are you this morning? I'm doing well, I'm doing well, mate. Very good. Yeah, so what I wanted to say to you, Carl, and I've been I've been meaning to ask you this for ages. Am I right with this this geomologist thing? Is this reflecting your scientific credentials? Yeah, I, I have a PhD in um moral biochemistry and molecular biology. I have been for the last almost five years an assistant professor at a university in in Texas. So I've been running a research lab. I Actually, this past week, I um, I sent out revisions for a couple of manuscripts that we're we're trying to finish up in the lab. So, so yeah, I guess I I am an ologist of some sort in real life. Did you do you like me? Do you place a reasonable amount of significance in the naming of such things as podcasts and adventures and stuff like that? I wouldn't say adventures, but uh, I I did. I, it, it's not a a big word, but it, I thought about what I was going to call my podcast. I think I went through no stone unturned or something, some iteration of that. And then I just hit on, and maybe that led to like gemologist, geologist. And I'm like, Oh, why don't I just put, call it gem gemologist. Pretty genius stroke, man. I, I, I really like it. So we've got, um, we've got a few uh, inter- interests in common. Um, we've we've played a few games. That's where I've I've met you. Where, where did I meet you in 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 Kev's Ash game? Would it have been? It might have been in Kevin Madison of Dungeon Musings Media Empire in his Ash game. Make sure you get that plug in. Yeah, I got <laughs> to get the plug in. Did we play your Broken Lands game or Invictus first? Can you remember? Broken Lands for sure. That was that's an older game. So I, I I played in that with you before I played in the Invictus. Ah, uh, I couldn't I couldn't remember. Yeah. So that's my, see, I was gonna say that we've got this interest in history, but I I seem to have a terrible memory, whereas you seem to be able to recall facts and figures pretty pretty well, I think. Uh, sometimes it's getting harder as you get older to remember things. I guess I I think I remember yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, Usually, how it goes, you know, you remember unimportant things or tri- what people would might they say trivia, but sometimes, you know, like dates and things that are important to you. I guess gaming being pretty important to me, I try to remember as much detail. No, I couldn't tell you the exact adventure that we ran together first, but uh, I kind of have a general idea. Mm, yeah. Of when we met. So, and I believe that's it. And then just, of course, on the Audio Dungeon Discord and interacting there on the Discords. And you call into you as like a, a fairly regular caller to various different podcasts before you started your own, right? Yeah, definitely. So delving into history, would would it be fair to say you're indulging in a little bit of um, light anglophilia, perhaps? I don't know. I've always had an interest in two things, history wise: Roman history and British history. And of course, you can you know, since the uh, Romans occupied Britain for a while. It kind of blends together eventually, but uh, you know, I've all, I like the Arthurian legends and the you know the Arthurian mythos as it's come up. Um, right now, we've been binging, or, or we've been we're binging. We binged the Crown. We finished the Crown, but uh, we've watched other shows that take place. We watched Downton Abbey. We, we're looking forward to the new season of Grant Chester, which takes place in 1960s England. I don't know. They, they're you guys make good uh, TV. That's enjoyable to watch. Well, I can't take it. I can't take any credit for that, of course. <laughs> I don't have Union Jack underwear or anything, but uh, just as well, just as well. <laughs> we'll draw a veil across that, if I may. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, but the crown, yeah. So interesting one. You talked about it on your podcast, and I thought, do you know what? That sounds quite a lot different to how I imagined it. And I think it was it must have been this time last weekend. I started watching it. Mm-hmm. Re- really good. Really liked it. I was surprised. Yeah, I think the acting is the acting is really good. I, that's why it surprised me about why I like I liked Downton Abbey so much. I'm like this this acting is really good. I mean, compared to a lot of I guess a lot of the the shows and series we watch, you know, they they put their hearts into it. Mm. These people, you know, I, I really liked The Crown the first couple seasons. I think like the the third and fourth season, the acting did not diminish, but it was a lot of uh, Prince Charles and and uh, Lady Diana. You know, it just, I don't know. It's a tragic story. You know, I, um, I don't know if you've gotten that far. No, I haven't. Uh, you have to judge for yourself, uh, you know, their their treatment of that of that story. But I like that. I really, there's a lot of things I thought maybe because the first two seasons, I really didn't know, you know, much about post-World War II British history. And it's, it's, it was pretty fascinating and how much then the Queen did and how she interacted with the PMs. Mm. Uh, it's good. They, they have a good treatment of it. I mean, it's, it definitely is enhanced for TV, right? It's, you know, it's like you could think of it as an alternate history because we don't, you know, it's embellished, uh, romanticized, but, uh, but the, the, you know, some of the events are there. I think uh, when uh, Queen Elizabeth went to, to Ghana, for example, is in it uh, when, when she met jo- uh, president John Kennedy so yeah, it's it's pretty cool. Yeah, I, f- I found it very, uh, very atmospheric. Like you say, good acting. Like you say, things I didn't know about, and I liked the um, I liked the bit where they were talking with uh, Churchill, and you could see his his kind of decline and how he was struggling to hang on to power Be- because you, because you could see he believed in things being a certain way. I got the impression that. He, he had in his mind that if if he wasn't in power, then things would just like slip. So yeah, that really good. That's a great recommendation. So so anybody listening, when Carl makes a, a recommendation for something to watch, it's it's to be taken seriously. <laughs> so we've both got this um, this fondness for Time Team, and I've I've always thought it's actually quite a strange program because they're just sort of like stomping around in in muddy fields and and looking down in holes and pulling out bits of pots there's something quite magical about it w- what's your take on time team carl oh i like the archaeology a lot i like anthropology i think if i could do my university again pre-doctored i would do like bio biological anthropology and i i said i think it's a well put together show you go out into a field you hear there's stuff there you try to dig it up and then you try to figure out how that fits into history. And I, I think they do a really good job there. There's so many past cultures that have lived on that, on that Island, you know, and, and they, uh, I've liked it. I've liked to have tried to figure out, you know, really, I think maybe it annoys my wife that when I see a program, like, how can I game this? How can I, (laughs) how can I create a game? And, you know, well, Roman times, that's, that's pretty obvious, but you know, what about, in you know early Saxon period, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, for example, pa- uh, Paleolithic period, right? Yeah, I mean, p- part of it really that the whole archaeology thing is is the investigation. So that ties in quite nicely with uh, Cthulhu, right? So we did Invictus. Um, was you routinely thinking back to episodes of Time Team when, when you was running? Cthulhu or was it in the back of your mind or how did the Invictus idea come to you what influenced me the most is the the story of the the Toderberg forest massacre you know so historically or I've been interested in that history for a long time and there are there's not just a really cool Osprey book that has very nice art on the subject um, but there's plenty of of new findings there's the occasional program that'll come on that you know, we found where they put the Roman bodies or whatever. So it's, it's always that incident has always been in the back of my mind. And I just reading about it kind of inspired me to try to put you guys in that situation. <laughs> so it's like you're saying, you know, your, your, your wife talking, you know, 
um, making fun of you almost for trying to work gaming into everything. It's an, it's another example of that, really. Yeah, totally. Uh, uh, but you also you you dialed up the mythos and you introduced injected a little bit of mythos into that game. It, it wasn't like super heavy or anything. I I thought you got it just about right. Obviously, that was something you was going for. And yeah, it was. It was. I tried to be subtle about it. Um, and and honestly, the way the mechanic works, if characters had never, or the way character agency worked, if you in that tale is that uh, if you hadn't explored or examined, you maybe would have never known. Uh, the mo- more important thing, I think, was the uh, interaction of between the players and this feeling of trudging into despair and into tragedy and uh, and and whether the mythos had a part in it or not or were just bystanders or the elements of the mythos i mean that i think that's part one of the themes in lovecraft's tales is that these sometimes well sometimes these creatures take an interest and enjoy the tragedy that unfolds whether they tweak tweak it here or not Right, so yeah, I definitely think you you managed to achieve that uh, that kind of feeling of of that kind of trudging into into tragedy and despair. I really liked the way the large scale battles worked out. In particular, the one where I, I think well, the one at the end that was uh, the grand finale. So that goes without saying, but the. The ambush where um, we we were rolling really well, we were rolling really well. Just crazy stuff was happening. I felt I had a good chance to use some different abilities from my character sheet. It 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 wasn't just like um it wasn't a typical RPG combat if if that makes any sense. Yeah, I think that would that's the uh, that's the beauty of the Call of Cthulhu system. It's pretty simple, so you can adapt it as you need it. So I kind of modded in or imported in an idea from other games, like a skill challenge. And I thought that would be more exciting and more interesting than a blow by blow account over and over and over again. I, I mean, I think I left, I left the, the blow by blow account for like a small operations that you might've had. Like when you went to go rescue one of your companions in the swamp or the, the end. Cause that, I think it was important at that point, but it did. I don't think we needed. We didn't need like a, a round by round account of the early phases of that that conflict. But just to get the the mood in and to have you highlight your expertise, all the players highlight their expertise. I think it worked really well. And then that you know, as the skill challenge goes, the more successes you get, the the better off your group is in the story. So I think it worked really well. It was it was an improvisation, but Call of Cthulhu lends itself to this simple mechanic that you can adapt. Yeah, and it 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 really flowed. It flowed quite nicely because we were playing on Discord audio only, and there was quite a few players. So I mean, it's it's not the sort of thing I would have looked forward to running, but it, you 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 had it down, man. It was it just I don't know. It just really worked. Yeah, I think it was really. It went really well. I had um, I was like seven players, but I think everyone meshed well. Everyone was engaged for the most part. So I, I just I'm just there as a, as a director, you know, not really it's the actors that bring. That's why people people don't go necessarily for to movies for directors. They go for the actors. So you know, it's it's y'all who made who made the story really. So in my opinion, I just have a framework. I have a few notes on a pad of note paper and just go from there oh and the osprey book as a reference <laughs> just you know for the for the for things that might have been may or may not have been recorded during that time it's history is yeah history is dodgy from back then the thing with those osprey books is because the art is so rich and detailed it really is a case of a picture paints a thousand words so a couple of those pictures i can imagine were very helpful to you in bringing alive some of the scenes and describing some of the details, even if it's just like the equipment that the uh, the characters were carrying or the adversaries or, or, or just the scenery. Right. And I think we should give proper credit to the book that we referred to a couple of times. It's, um, if 
this Todeberg Forest 89, the destruction of Varus and his legions. So it's campaign book 228. The author is Michael McNally and the illustrator of the art, the wonderful art that uh, Colin just referred to is Peter Dennis. So just to give a proper citation uh, for that product. And I, it's, it's really nice. It's, it's not the end all be all mag, uh, magnum opus on the subject, but it's a good, as Osprey books are right. They're more like, they're more or less cliff notes with awesome pictures and, and cartography. <laughs> so, and they, they kind of, they're like lead ins to hopefully further study on the subject um, really, the the books are designed for miniatures play. Uh, the especially the earlier ones even have like the list of armies that you could run um, in this type of situation. But they've gone more historical or cliff notes of history. And there you go. So listeners, take note. You know that the geomologist is in the house when we get proper citations on Spike Pit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll tr- we'll try. We might hopefully uh... proper scientific rigor. Yeah, that's a big deal, right? I mean, <laughs> yeah, man, it's a big deal. Well, I heard you talking recently about. I think it was maybe yourself and uh, Joe, uh, Joe Richter, mm-hmm. talking about the lo- the the sort of um, ha- how people's confidence in science in recent years may have been shaken. I think was it you guys talking about that? Am I right? Yeah, I, I had mentioned it. Actually, uh, the person who did a great job of describing maybe when this started happening was BJ of the Arcane Alienist. Joe, you know, we, all of us who are doing this RPG, RPG a day 2021 are calling into each other's shows, especially now that we're like 21 days in, which reminds me I need to publish. My, <laughs> I have it ready, but I need to publish the latest. But um, As do I. Yeah, so he gave a really good, like, because I posed that question, like, when did this happen? And Joe responded, but BJ uh, kind of gave, like, a like he felt like it happened in around the 80s. Um, You're right. I re- I recall now it, it was BJ because he's got some background in, um, is it psych- psychology or something like that? Or something. Oh, does he? That's really cool. Yeah, he, yeah. He, he, he must be some other, an a another ologist. Oh, that's right. He's a sociologist. That's it. That was it. I know he's an ologist. <laughs> yeah, he did. He talked about that. That's pretty cool. Yeah, the ar- the arcane alienologist. <laughs> Is that xenobiologist? Maybe. I like him. I like the, the 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 audio dungeon Discord community is pretty cool. It's how I came came back into the hobby full force. Really, you know, with um being invited to that Discord and playing games with people in that Discord. So oh, right. Really I, has- I hadn't realized that. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. A really nice chat with Carl. I hope you'll agree. More of that to come in the coming weeks. But we haven't heard the last from Carl in this episode. A more recent call in now and then followed up with some best wishes from some of my buddies. It's all the pit crew all the time. Hey, Colin, that's pretty awesome that you can uh, fix a boiler even though you messed up that this time that you're sharing that you fixed. I'm, I guess I'm fascinated by that. I'm not really a handyman. Sure. I can put together Ikea shelves and whatever, but you know, I'm like when my, when I, my, my, when the brakes have to be changed in my vehicle, I can drive over to my buddy and he can change the brakes for uh, lunch and a case of beer, which is very nice. (laughs) They just buy the parts. I'm just amazed that uh, people, yeah, it's just cool to have those skills. Um, and I don't have them, so I I salute you. Um, and uh, very cool. I hope you get things back in order. Kind of suck to not have water and heating um, during the winter, but uh, kudos to you, my man. So it is rough not having a, a boiler, no heating, no water, but thankfully we muddled through got my folks live next door so it weren't too hard on the family yeah thanks for the call carl i mean the handyman thing i've just always done my own stuff Uh, maybe in future episodes i'll talk a, a, a little bit more about some of my projects but i started making things and taking things apart from a very young age i was probably taking things apart as soon as I could start moving around. 
got really early memories of fiddling with a clock and a screwdriver and getting myself an electric shock. I think I've actually spoken about that before. The plot thickens with regard to the boiler. I've now traced a fault on the pressure reduction valve and a pressure release valve and a, and a water to water heat exchanger parts on order and I'll be fitting them as soon as they arrive and hopefully it will be fully operational then. At the minute I'm just losing very slowly losing a little bit of pressure and the um, the water's taking an age to, to heat up and it's kind of modulating between hot and cold. But I've done my research, swap these parts out and I'll be all systems go. Closing out the show then, we've got some best wishes from my buddies in the pit crew. We hear from Che Webster, Roleplay Rescue, Jason Connolly of Nerds RPG Variety Cast, and Joe Richter of Hindsightless. Spreading some Christmas cheer and best wishes for the new year. I never know whether these are a bit personal for the podcast, but I feel it's the season of goodwill. Let's kind of keep things upbeat and chuck it in the show why not a little bit of self self-indulgence i mean what is christmas if there isn't a little bit of self-indulgence going on there i know i've indulged a little bit heavily i'll almost be relieved to take a little bit of a, a break from uh, the excess that is uh, all the food and drink and merry making but it comes but once a year Talking of the pit crew, I want to welcome on board a new member, Mystic Womble. They originally hail from southwest London, the birthplace of my lady wife, and they've moved over to the States. I hope they're enjoying their time over there. I'm sure they are, and enjoying episodes of Spike Pit, apparently listening to some of the back catalogue. Thanks for the generosity uh, to new member and existing members. Uh, really appreciate it, uh, particularly at this time during my training. Um, it, cash gets a little bit tight when you're, you're, you're working for nothing. But looking forward to a job starting in July and get back onto a more even keel then. Anyway enough of my woes i will leave you with the best wishes and once again wishing you all the best for 2020 catch up again soon hey colin just wanted to say kind of a happy christmas a little early and thank you for your episode ho 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 just kind of checking in with us which i really appreciated and well done man for getting through the first term rightly said the hardest term and um, yeah, really great for he getting through your first placement as well. So I hope you enjoyed the second one. I guess that'll be a bit different in the heart of Luton. Um, but yeah, wishing you all the best, man, for the new year. Game on. Hey, Colin, Jason here. Just want to say happy holiday to you and your family. It was great hearing your voice again. Hang in there. I enjoy and following your endeavors and wish you all the best luck, my friend. Take care. Yo, what up, Colin? Wanted to call and wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I hope you have a fantastic end to 2021 and that 2022 is just a, a, just an amazing year for you. You're a super solid dude. I wish you and yours nothing but the best, and I will talk to you soon. Peace out. <laughs> And that, as they say, is a wrap. Big thanks goes out to you, the listener, for taking a bit of time out of your day to listen to old Spike Pit. Take care, and I'll catch you later.